In 2017, I posted a video on how to easily convert fluorescent lights to LED. That video has over 2.6 million views and is still going strong. While that video is still useful today, a lot's changed since filming that four years ago, and I've discovered a new LED tube that is a total game changer. I'm going to introduce you to this new product. I'm going to tell you why this is the LED tube to use. And if you choose to rewire your fixture for your conversion, I'm going to show you a different way to do it than the original video. Thanks to hybrid LED tubes, a fluorescent to LED conversion is far simpler than it was four years ago. These tubes can be used in just about any fluorescent tube fixture, even the ones you've already converted to LED. Today I'm going to show you how these T8 replacement tubes can be used in three different types of fixtures. In the second half of the video, I'm going to show you how you can rewire your fixture to bypass the ballast and to use a double-ended configuration. Now don't worry about that mouthful, that step is entirely optional. Now if you're here just for the rewiring, I have a link in the description down below so you can skip ahead if you'd like. Now before we go any further, I'd like to ask that you subscribe to Toolbox DIY and click that bell so you get notifications of future videos. Okay, let's do a quick recap of the original video and some of the criticisms I received and how these tubes can solve many of those problems. Back then, single-ended tubes were about the only ones you could find. This meant that power is only delivered to one end of the tube. So we had to take apart the fixture, we had to remove the ballast, we had to replace the lamp holders or tombstones that go on the end, and then we had to rewire the whole thing so that it would work. Let's go over some of the criticisms of that first video. Too much work. Too complicated. Too time-consuming. Why not just buy a new fixture? I don't necessarily disagree with any of those criticisms, but I am a firm believer in bypassing the ballast when you convert to LED. And that's for two reasons. One, ballasts consume electricity. It's not a lot, but they do consume power. Two, ballasts will fail. And when they fail, you'll have to rewire the fixture anyways. So I say knock it out right from the beginning. But with these tubes, it's entirely up to you. Okay, let's go over how this tube works and why this is the one size fits all LED retrofit tube. This is a type A plus type B. Type A means that it will work with a ballast. These are also called plug and play tubes. You take out your fluorescent tube, you put this one in, it just works. Type B means that you have to bypass the ballast. You put the two together and now you have options. You can take out fluorescent, put this one in. And then if the ballast ever fails, you can bypass the ballast, put this right back in, and it will just work. Now one caveat with type A is they're not always compatible with every single ballast. Most come with a compatibility chart. So you may want to look at your ballast model number and see if it is compat compatible with the tube that you choose. Now if you decide to bypass the ballast, you have a decision to make. Do you want single-ended power? or do you want double-ended power? Single-ended is the most work. This is what I demonstrated in the first video. This requires that you replace the tombstones, the things that go on the end, whereas double-ended, you don't have to do that. This one, you have options. It will work with either. Yes, you heard that right. So this will work with or without a ballast. It will work with single-ended or double-ended power configuration. Allow me to give you a quick demonstration of, the, of these LED tubes in three different fixtures. Here we have a fixture that's fluorescent. It's got five fluorescent tubes in it currently. We pop in the LED light tube and we see that it works. Now here we have an LED fixture. This is actually the fixture from the first video. Uh, it's been converted and it uses a single ended connection. So power is only applied from the center connectors you see here. I can pop this tube in there and it works. And lastly, we've got this fixture, which I recently converted using just these, these tubes. I bypassed the ballast, and these are set up for a double-ended connection. So you can see it works in all three. If you followed the steps in my first video, you can still use these tubes in those fixtures as well. You can comfortably purchase these and use them in any fixture, fluorescent or LED. I have a link down below to this specific tube. I'm sure there are multiple manufacturers out there, so if you want to search for these, you want to look for a Type A plus Type B that accepts a single-ended and double-ended connection. Okay, since I'm such a big proponent of bypassing the ballast, I'm going to show you how to do that with this fixture. 
we're going to bypass the ballast and we're going to set it up for a double ended connection which is the simplest way to bypass the ballast this means that connectors on one end will get neutral connectors on the other end will get hot if you don't know what that means don't worry it'll all make sense as i demonstrate this I have a three tube fixture here. I've taken it off of the ceiling. That's not necessary. I'm just doing it to make it easier to demonstrate for you. Obviously you'll want to take the fluorescent tubes out and then we want to take off the ballast cover. On this fixture, the ballast cover is the reflector. Uh, if that's not the case on your fixture, uh, you might have say a two, two tube fixture. There might be a cover. It's sort of a bit of a pyramid in the middle here with screws on each end. Uh, that might be where your ballast is. On this one, we've got clips. So we just take those off on each end. You see we've got our ballast connected to our home wiring. Now, let me clear up some confusion. Yes, there's wires coming out of my bench. These are props. Uh, this is to demonstrate for you what you will see uh, with a fixture that is mounted to the ceiling. Now before you touch any of this wiring, make sure you shut off the circuit breaker. Just shutting off the light switch is not safe enough, so please be sure to shut off the circuit breaker. Once you've done that, now we're ready to get rid of this, this ballast. So what you'll see in North America, you'll have a black wire that's hot, a white wire that's neutral, and you'll have a bare copper wire that's ground. You don't need to do anything with the copper wire. We can just leave that alone. You'll want to remove screw nuts. You may have a plug-in connector. If that's the case, you'll need to cut off the wires at the base of the plug-in connector. Now, it is not mandatory to physically remove the ballast. We just want to snip the wires. Uh, I recommend snipping the wires as close as possible. That way, if you leave it in, you don't have any loose wires uh, that could interfere with operation. You'll see here, uh, I've got a red wire going to one end of the fixture and I've got three blue wires. So I'm gonna focus on this end first and then I'll change camera angles and show you the other end. And I am gonna go ahead and remove the ballast. and I will dispose of that properly. Okay, you'll see we have three wires, each going to one of these tombstones. They all reach far enough, so this is where it's quite simple. Now we just need to pick. Do we want hot or do we want neutral going to this end? Let's go hot. So now what we need to do is we need to strip the wire and I highly recommend the self-adjusting stripper it makes easy work of this. All right, and we'll group all our wires together. And it's uh, best to take some pliers and twist those together. And then reapply the screw nut that we saved. Now, you don't have to use screw nuts. You can also use push-in connectors. There are critics of push-in connectors. I don't have a problem with them. Okay, now let's uh, switch camera angles and do the other end. You'll notice something different on this end. We only have one wire. Well, let me give you a picture of this. You can see that each tombstone is daisy chained. So this one wire is actually supplying electricity to all three connectors. So what we'll do is we'll cut it off about here. Strip our wire. With just two wires, the pliers aren't as important. You want to pull on these wires to make sure that you got a good solid connection. 
we're good. Well, that's all there is to it. You can see it really is simple. One last piece of advice I have is to use the stickers that come with many of these tubes. It lets others know that these fixtures have been converted and that they no longer accept fluorescent. You can place the sticker um, near one end or the other. It's kind of, it'll kind of be hidden underneath the bulbs. Well, thanks for joining me today. I hope you learned something. Please make sure you get subscribed to Toolbox DIY so you get notification of all of our future videos. I'm Chris with Toolbox DIY. Thanks for watching.